Now I'm switching to English uh, because we have an international guest. We have Jad Muawad uh, with us today from the International Energy Agency. Uh, and I think we will, yes, now we see you on the screen. Um, very welcome. You're the communications and digital uh, communi head of communications and digital office uh, at the International uh, Energy Agency, and you will talk to us about how you work with sharing your knowledge on those media platforms, among other things. So now I give the uh, wall to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Josephine. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. It's a real a great pleasure to be joining you uh, here from Paris, where the IEA is located. Um, and I, I logged in just a few minutes ago, but I really didn't. My Swedish is not quite up to speed, so I didn't quite catch all of the discussions. But I hope that I'll be able to, um, in maybe 10, 15 minutes, give you an overview, really, of the IEA, who we are, and basically our engagement strategy and how we have used the Wikipedia platform, Wikipedia uh, to, um, to expand and to reach uh, to a broader audience. So I think, Josephine, you're controlling the slide, so um, I, I'll just let you kind of go through the first ones to the next one, please. And the next one. <laughs> so... Um, who is who is the what is the IEA for those of you who have not maybe heard uh, of us? So next slide, um, IEA was uh, created in 1974 um, during the first uh, global uh, energy shock, the first oil shock, uh, to ensure the security of energy supplies of oil supplies. But 40 some years later, we're going to be actually celebrating our 50th anniversary next year. Uh, 50 years later the IEA has really transformed its mandate and we're today uh, more the uh, energy transition agency. So we keep energy security as a core value and mission for the agency, but also uh, our new mission and our new mandate is to lead the uh, transition to, uh, to a cleaner energy system. Uh, next slide. I have a bit of delay. Uh, so we're mostly uh, an analytical uh, uh, organization. We're an international intergovernmental organization. We have 31 member countries. We produce a lot of analysis. This is a, a snapshot from last year. We produce a huge amount of data on the energy sector and um, uh, data on the um, uh, of all types of energies, which we publish uh, on our website. Um, next slide. Uh, two years ago, we uh, kind of led uh, the march for the energy sector in outlining a pathway for the energy sector, which represents 80% um, of global greenhouse uh, gas emissions, uh, certainly energy-related emissions, um, to reach net zero by 2050. And this new scenario that we put out to kind of plot a pathway to get to net zero by 2050 has now become the heart of our analysis and the heart of all of the tracking work that we do and the analytical and scenario work that we do. Next slide. Um, so part of also the mandate of the agency is, and particularly of our executive director uh, today, is to really kind of address some of the hard, hardest questions on energy and climate and essentially serve uh, particularly um, at these kind of difficult times, certainly very contradictory times, very complex, complex times to really kind of sound, you know, the uh, a word of um, objective analysis and truth and basically saying it as it is. So uh, we use various platforms to do that, obviously, um, uh, to set the records straight with our facts, with our data and with our analysis. Next slide. Um, the, the heart of the IEA's work really is international intergovernmental relations. So we are very, very focused and very active in many international forums at the G7, at the G20, at various uh, regional uh, forums. Um, we interact very at a very high level with the COP process. Uh, we advise governments and also industry in how to transition their energy systems. And um, we're we're very um, we're very well heard. Next slide, please. 
were very well heard, heard in these forums. And this was particularly true when uh, the, the um, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine last year. And we put out a huge amount of analysis, very timely, very rapid analysis on how countries could reduce their uh, energy dependency, their imports, uh, particularly in Europe from Russian sources, but also how, cust how citizens, how people could also reduce their energy uh, bills, uh, maybe save uh, money and reduce their emissions uh, through various um, steps. So um, the, the heart of our work was very much directed at providing advice uh, to, to, to governments. Next slide, please. Um, and and we use obviously um, a lot of media channels, and we are very kind of widely quoted uh, in the press. This is just a very short snapshot of some of the places where we've been quoted in the in the last year. Uh, next slide. And one of the things that I mentioned, and this is going to be relevant in our discussions about uh, Wikipedia, is that we are also very keen to engage with and debunking some of the myths, maybe misconceptions, uh, misperceptions, or in fact, even lies about uh, the, the causes of the energy crisis and, and really kind of set the record straight, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we did that uh, not too long ago. Um, here, an example from the an op ed in the Financial Times, but also in various other channels. Next slide. Well, that's just some nice things that people say about us uh, just to sort of signify the and showcase the impact that we have here at a government level. Next slide. So uh, next slide. The, the important part of, of, of kind of our public engagement strategy is that while we're very effective, I believe, in engaging with our governments and driving some of the um, debates, shaping some of the debates about where the transition should be going, I think we also have a big major responsibility in engaging with the public. And I think here, uh, a public engagement strategy um, uh, is very, very important for us. There is a real need to help convince our citizens, particularly some of the younger citizens that are out there that are particularly anxious about the climate crisis, uh, to engage with them, to provide uh, um, positive messages, to, to, to help explain the challenges and and provide perhaps even some solutions that they can that they can endorse and we are we started doing that last year very forcefully through a number of initiatives that we've taken uh, that I will basically uh, very quickly explain um, as as a background to where we have thought about our relationship with Wiki, with, with Wikipedia. Next slide. So generally speaking, uh, and you can click through, I'm sorry, there's an animation here, but you can click through the end of this animation. Uh, we want to increase our audience and uh, through our own channels, but also if you click through a couple of more times, uh, by reaching out uh, to, and these are our channels that we have, we by reaching out to new channels and basically seeding and, and sharing our content on these new channels, and then one more click or two more clicks, uh, and also uh, uh, creating partnerships with um, with other organizations um, such as Google, uh, such as the FT. And I'll give you some examples before I get into the, the case study here of our work with uh, Wikipedia. Uh, next slide, please. Again. <laughs> so uh, just a few examples from the FT, Google, and Wikipedia. And here, what's interesting with these examples that I'm going to run through is that in many of these cases, in all of these cases, uh, the 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 impulse on our end was the same. We wanted to basically share our content, share our analysis well beyond our traditional audiences, which again, is government and industry, mostly government, uh, but also um, make sure that, uh, you know, some of the, um, some of the uh, misinformation perhaps or disinformation that is out there is effectively, uh, we respond effectively to that. And that is true uh, on major uh, digital platforms um, and it's also true to for us to be able to take some a somewhat very technical content, uh, obviously, and and bring it to an audience uh, that is uh, certainly not technical but really engaged and interesting in these topics. Next slide, please. So, with the Financial Times, just a quick example, we took our net zero scenario, which is the the landmark report scenario that we produced in 2021, 
and we worked with the Financial Times to produce this uh, this uh, game uh, that is still online that they launched last year, exactly a year ago on Earth Day, um, uh, called the Climate Game, um, and which was basically a gamification of how to get to net zero. Uh, the game uh, takes about fifteen minutes. It's beyond. It's it's outside of the FT paywall, so you can still uh, play that. And I certainly challenge you to to try it out. Uh, it's difficult but achievable, which is basically the the takeaway from how to get to net zero. Uh, it's a challenging pathway, but it is certainly possible to get there. Um, and um, the 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 experiment here that we took is, uh, or certainly the game here is, is that you are the minister for future generation, and as that. Um, for the world, and you need to uh, resolve a number of steps to to see if you can get to net zero. Uh, this was the first attempt on our part to basically bring our analysis outside of our own reports and into a more general uh, public uh, domain. And it's been quite uh, uh, successful, I think, and it's certainly quite a, I, I, I dare, I, fun is maybe one way of putting it, but certainly a very engaging way to kind of interact with our content. Next slide, please. Um, Google last year, um, also around the same time as the energy crisis happened and Russia invaded Ukraine, um, reached out to us uh, for uh, something somewhat uh, uh, similar. Uh, next slide. Uh, as you may be aware, um, when there is a major crisis, uh, Google develops um, uh, basically uh, modules that they put on top of search. The idea here is that when there is a crisis, um, it's very hard for the Google al algorithm to surface very quickly relevant information on, on a topic. So during the COVID crisis, um, while the information was available or some information was available in the early days and months of the crisis, um, it was very difficult for people to get uh, reliable information. So in a, in a bit to sort of provide users with uh, immediate access to the most relevant uh, data, Google developed with the support of the World Health Organization and various government agencies, depending on which uh, Google page you were uh, searching on, uh, they developed these modules that I think are still uh, up and running uh, that provide very informative information on the disease. Next slide. And they do the same thing on climate change, by the way. This page is still up. Uh, they work with the UN uh, to, to provide some very uh, interesting kind of a snapshot um, analysis or at least uh, information about about uh, sustainability and climate change and how to address that. Next slide. But when it came to the energy crisis, they identified what they call the content gap um, between what people were searching for and the information that was available. And so they reached out to us and we worked with them to develop basically content and analysis that we had already produced perhaps, but that we sort of created or recreated um, on our website so that it could be used by Google on these uh, on top of their search uh, for these topics. So next slide. So we created these uh, these pages, various resources that were based on existing analysis or in some cases new analysis on uh, saving energy, on providing a, a frequently asked questions and answers on the topic. Uh, uh, we produced videos, uh, infographics, etc. that we basically produced and and populated on our website. Next slide. And that allowed Google to essentially take that information. And I think if you just kind of click one more time, you'll see where the highlights on top of search. And they did that in, in about 30 countries and in 20 languages. Uh, the information was kind of quickly available. And some of our recommendations were also quickly available. And if you click one more time, You'll also see here that Wikipedia comes up very high on Google search and certainly on these modules. So that gives you a hint basically at the next step, which is why it is so important for us to also be engaged with Wikipedia and, and be engaged with the platform. So this is all context. Uh, next slide. Uh, and sorry, and just as a quick aside, we're planning to do the same thing for, the, for YouTube, uh, which is the next slide, um, and work with YouTube to create a new YouTube channel to essentially uh, for the IEA to essentially have a much more engaging uh, public communications approach to uh, and public in engagement approach uh, to some of the topics uh, that, that we handle. Next slide. So for Wikipedia, um, finally getting to that, uh, next one. Um, we, uh, 
we had set up a number of objectives uh, for this collaboration, which uh, are, have really kind of all worked out really nicely. So the first one, as I hinted at it, is to fulfill our public service mission. We are an international organization. We're an intergovernmental agency. We want to provide the, this information with as many people as possible. And obviously being uh, on Wikipedia and for our content to be available for the Wikipedia community is absolutely important. Uh, sorry, just uh, the second one is also quite important on the previous uh, bullet um, is the, this misinformation and disinformation campaign. And this is something that with uh, Wikipedia, we had some discussions about. It is a, a, a very difficult, it's a controversial topic when it should not be. There are facts and, and, and there are uh, uh, objective analysis. And we really want to make sure that the work that we do uh, from our 350 analysts and modelers in Paris gets a wide dissemination because uh, it's important for all of us to get the facts. And of course, we want to make sure that we are available as a resource for the community and for the community of editors, uh, whether it's in energy or in climate or other topics that we cover, is aware that we are available as a resource and we are uh, very willing to uh, cooperate, collaborate with, with all of you. Uh, there's a final uh, uh, dimension to this is that the IEA uh, wants to make uh, its analysis um, available uh, as widely as possible. Um, and I'll get into some of the hurdles that we had to work through uh, to be able to do that and collaborate with Wikipedia. But that is a very strong objective that we've had with this collaboration. Okay, next next slide. Uh, the, we, we kicked it off basically as a bit of a pilot project. And um, the, similarly to what happened with the Google collaboration, uh, we kicked off the wiki pilot uh, with the content that we created for uh, the, the war in Ukraine. And um, we began uh, editing the most relevant pages um, on Wikipedia that related to the analysis that we had produced very quickly in response to the, to the crisis. Next slide. Um, once once we sort of established that that was um, that that was uh, available and possible, we moved to uh, small and medium edits, as in just a few sentences uh, on on very high impact articles. And the idea here was to make sure that the IA's um, uh, analysis was um, was seen on on high impact articles. This is the energy page. Obviously, this is something that gets a lot of views. Um, but also make sure that um, we didn't sort of uh, spend too much time, as, as it were, in getting into too many detailed uh, uh, um, edits because we wanted to basically still test the process and the project. Next uh, slide. Um, once we um, that worked out, we then spend more time uh, basically on these um, uh, on edits, and these are just a few examples here, on edits that were more substantive, but on very specific moments. So here the example of the economic impact of the Russian invasion, some of the edits that we made here were very relevant at the moment at that time, obviously related to the disruptions in energy supplies from Russia and gas supplies and oil supplies, uh, the impact of the global energy crisis. Uh, this has become basically a historic uh, event um, and so we wanted to make sure that our analysis and our views on this, and, and we are the, the, the most preeminent energy uh, uh, organization. Um, and, and so as, as such, we are essentially an authority in some of these topics. We wanted to make sure that our analysis that is published elsewhere uh, makes its way on, on, the, uh, uh, um, on Wikipedia. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is something that we also did not ignore, the low-hanging fruit, sort of fixing a number of uh, broken uh, backlinks, um, uh, something that, um, you know, may be a bit time-consuming, but certainly uh, uh, has a very important value in just sort of uh, uh, making sure that our, our website is up to date and the links are up to date. Next slide. Um, we also uploaded, so we're, we're not just an analytical agency, as I mentioned, we're also a very data heavy agency. We produce a huge amount of data and charts. Uh, we uploaded our charts, um, as uh, you can see here, to Wikicommons for the community to use, uh, which is uh, very important for us. 
um, the the analysis can also take the form of, of this data. And we were very keen and hopeful that they would be reused in different pages. Uh, next slide. I believe here, yes, we have in fact uh, seen that editors are now using our graphics in many languages and across the various sites. Um, these are just some examples here where uh, some of the charts that we uploaded were reused elsewhere on the uh, on Wikipedia in various different uh, uh, languages. Uh, next slide. Um, so once we kind of proved that the uh, collaboration was working and that we were effectively um, uh, able to uh, provide some of our analysis uh, on the platform, we really kicked the project up, in, uh, up a notch. And the next stage was to basically take uh, one of our key reports. Um, this is when the renewables uh, report came out, the annual renewables report came out last year. And we worked with our analysts internally to identify the number of articles where we had relevant updates that we could make from our most late, late, uh, recent analysis. And so um, we kind of created an internal task force within the IEA uh, to identify you know, which pages needed to be, to be uh, um, uploaded, um, edited. We identified which pieces of information needed to be uh, uh, updated, and we went out and started uh, that work. Uh, next slide. So that's just an example here on the solar power page, obviously a very important page uh, for anyone who's just researching or interested in, in solar energy. And as you can see here, um, we, we made sure that some of the uh, work that we do, and this is a very uh, simple example, but we certainly added a lot more information and data was available uh, as the latest source of, uh, the most recent source of information from the IEA. Uh, next slide. So I mentioned the renewables report, that's an important report for us, and that was a timely one and it gets updated, but we didn't just uh, update uh, pages around report launches. We also went on some of the big topics that we uh, have an expertise on. These are just some examples, uh, CCS and hydrogen. And we also made edits to these pages uh, based on the analysis that we had produced. Obviously, uh, what makes this collaboration work is that the IEA is an authority and is an authoritative source Everything that we uh, edit is uh, linked to and is referenced. And so uh, that gives us a huge amount of confidence that uh, we want to be uh, used as a resource and we want to be available uh, for the community and for, for, for your users, for the users of, of the platform uh, to find. Uh, next slide. So to date, uh, the numbers may have changed just a tiny bit. We've edited, uh, we've uh, made edits to over 50 pages. Um, Here's just uh, some examples. I don't think this is even an exhaustive list. And we have a project or um, uh, a pipeline of projects to keep doing this. Uh, we see this as an extremely important opportunity for us to make sure that the analysis that we do uh, is found by the uh, largest number of users. Uh, next slide. Um, one uh, word uh, here is that one of the key enablers of this project was that, sorry, just before that, uh, was that we moved to all of our analysis to CC by four uh, before we could actually uh, do that. So just as a uh, piece of, con uh, just a little bit of context, uh, all of the IEA analysis is free. Every report that we provide is free. Every report and chart that is in the report and data tables that are in these reports are free and available on our website. But we had still, because they used to be sold, we had still some fairly restrictive terms and conditions attached to them. And I think one of the great sort of uh, benefits of this, of this work is that uh, this project, as well as a mandate that we have been given by our governments to make more IA analysis and da uh, more data free, uh, these two kind of um, um, factors allowed us to really quickly move all of our content to CC by four. And this was kind of quite transformational. It's something we've been wanting to do for a while, but essentially we want our analysis to be used and we want our analysis to be reprinted and republished um, by as many people as possible. And so we, now everything, we have instituted a site-wide CC by four license. Um, it does not apply to the data that we sell. So the IA still sells some data, but. Uh, uh, except for that, uh, everything that we have available on our website, including the data that
that is published in our data browsers, um, the charts, and certainly every piece of analysis uh, is available for, for use. And that's really enabled the, this collaboration and the edits uh, to, to, uh, to happen. And we're really, really delighted uh, that that's happened. Next slide. And here, just um, a, a sense of uh, where this uh, this has gone. We want our analysis to grow. We want the reach of the work of the IEA to grow, but we're quite limited and constrained, obviously, in our own reach. And we want to be available, and we want to uh, collaborate, uh, so that what we do is available uh, to the broadest possible audience. Uh, next slide. So that's the question, what next? And I'd be very happy to take some questions uh, uh, or, or entertain some ideas. Uh, we're very open, and this is the end of my presentation, uh, Josephine. Um, we're very open to, uh, to, to ideas, to suggestions, uh, and also to feedback from, from all of you um, on this and, and, and what we should be doing next. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Um, just briefly to see if there are any questions from the audience. Uh, otherwise, I have just one follow-up question, and that would be, uh, what do you see uh, could be the role of the volunteers? What would you like the volunteers in a, in a dream world to, to do with your material um, and, and build, build more upon it? Yes, thank you. And thanks for this opportunity, uh, Josephine, and, and to all the colleagues and all the, the volunteers and to the community. I think it's a really um, interesting moment for us. And, uh, you know, basically what I would like is for uh, everyone out there to recognize and to see the IA as a resource and to really just basically take the information that you find, you know, share it as widely as possible, use it. Um, confronted with other sources. I think there is a great moment right now in the energy and in the climate space uh, where the uh, issues are extremely important, where we're in a year of great transition and transformation with the, uh, with the, with the, uh, with the energy crisis on one hand, with the climate crisis on the other, where the need for action is absolutely uh, obvious and where the political process needs to, to get there. And I think we need basically as much public engagement and we need as much public information to be available for everyone to really kind of take this topic beyond the beyond the you know the the myths that we find beyond the fantasies beyond some of the misconceptions that you might have both on the energy transition and perhaps even on the climate challenge and to really help us frame kind of what are the solutions to get us to a more sustainable future for our planet so to me, this is a great opportunity to basically say we're open. Uh, please come and work with us. There's a limited capacity on our end to do as much as we would like to do, but certainly we would count on the community to help support us. Great. Thank you so much. And thanks for joining us today. And Thank have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thanks.